Last time I talked about scientific molding. What is it? This time I'm going to talk about how it applies to injection molding. How, how does the molder benefit from understanding molding as a science? To make it a science, we need to understand there are four variables in the process, only four. That's all the plastic feels. All the plastic knows is its pressure, its temperature, its flow rate, and its cooling rate. Those are the four conditions that determine the part properties. The machine controls determine what those four conditions are. The plastic does know, doesn't know anything about injection pressures or timers or barrel temperatures. It doesn't know that. It only knows the effects of four variables. What I'm telling you is you have to look at plastics, at molding, from the plastics point of view. If you do that, the plastics will tell you what their problems are. Let's give some examples. Let's say you have, uh, oh, sink marks. What's the problem? The problem is there are not enough molecules in here. We had to shrink, and in areas that are the warmest, we pull molecules away from the cooler areas, and when we finally froze, we made a dip in the plastic. So the problem is not enough molecules. The solution? Put more molecules in. Simple. Now, as a molder, do you know how to do that? Sure. Increase the pressure. How about warp? What do the molecules say is the cause of warp? They will say, we are shrinking a different amount on each side of the part. That causes warp. The solution? Don't let them shrink a different amount. Well, the shrinkage is occurring in the mold, so it requires a different mold temperature on each half of the mold. Another example, dimensions. Talked about that in the last session, but what do the molecules say is the problem? Wrong number of us in here. If the part is too big and not shrinking enough, take some molecules out. If the part's too small, put some molecules in. Now, as a molder, you know how to do that. Raise injection pressure, for example. There might be a problem with the timers. If you have a, a new molded machine with velocity to pressure transfer, you might increase that a little bit. But now you know what the problem is. And various molding experts may come up with different solutions. There are often more than one machine adjustment that will solve a problem. In the case of dimensions, I'd prefer first stage injection pressure and make sure there's not discharge, there's no gate, there's not a gate sealing problem. Another molder might say, no, I'd raise temperature. Well, raised temperature will put more molecules in the cavity because there's a lower viscosity, it fl fl flows more easily. Uh, a timer might do it if you don't have enough time on first stage. So these molding experts Three different ones may have three different solutions, and they might all be right. But the problem is the wrong number of molecules. So my advice is listen to your molecules. They'll tell you what the problem is. The solution, understand what the controls do to each of these four variables. Let's take an example. I raise injection pressure. What did the molecules say I did? Well, they'll say, you put more of us in here, you, you raised our pressure. What else will they say? Well, it depends on the machine, but on some machines it will say, we fill faster. The higher pressure moved molecules along faster. Uh, if you have a fill rate control machine, they wouldn't say that. Let's take, uh, oh, barrel temperature. Raise barrel temperature, any of the zones, don't care. What will the molecules say I did? Now, they've never heard of barrel temperature, but they will say, You've raised our temperature, one of the four variables. And what happens to the parts? Well, probably the plastic mold fills faster, lower viscosity plastic. The cavity pressure is going to go up, less pressure loss to the cavity. The required molding time is going to increase because there's more heat to be taken out. So what do the molecules tell you is the problem? Well, they'll tell you 
we don't know because you changed everything. You changed our pressure, you changed our temperature, you changed our cooling rate, uh, you changed everything. Well, what's the solution? The solution is to understand that if you have a specific problem, find out what the molecules are telling you the cause and then pick that control, sometimes more than one, that will correct that problem. Now, a word of caution. Often, when you change one machine control, you change more than one of the plastic variables. For example, I raised injection pressure in that first example. I changed fuel rate and I changed pressure. The part properties changed. Might be a good part might be a defect. What if the part cracked and the crack was in the direction of flow? That would be caused by fill rate. So if I were to only want an increase or decrease in pressure, yes, I'd change injection pressure, but I'd also, also change the fill rate or the cooling rate, both, both of which will affect the orientation of the part. Well, those are just examples of how the four variables affect molded part properties and how the machine controls are used intelligently to control those four variables, four variables if you understand what each of those machine variables are doing.